Hi, this is the Dumb Old Dad, and uh, this is uh, a series of videos about my um, experience with melanoma cancer. This is number three, so if this is the first video you're watching, click on the link in the description. It will take you back to video number one, and you can watch this series from the beginning. So, um, <clears throat> last video I talked about uh, the diagnosis and what happened to me there. So this, I'm at home and my wife and I had cried about what my diagnosis was. We didn't know how long I had to live. We didn't know whether I was going to live. We didn't know whether I was gonna have chemotherapy, if I was gonna have surgeries. I, I didn't even know any of that stuff. Um, they did tell me that I would have at least one surgery and maybe multiple surgeries before this was all over. So that was also hanging over my head and weighing on me very seriously. Because I, I knew I was going to have just a surgery, probably a major surgery, but I had no idea what it was, how long it would last, any of that stuff. So the next thing we decided to do is we had to tell our kids. And so when they got home from school, we sat each of them down and we told them what was going on. And as much as we knew at that point, which wasn't much, and really that's kind of the hard part about melanoma or any cancers, I guess, is you just don't know the answers. You have several options out in front of you and you don't know which of those options you're gonna have to deal with. You don't know whether you're gonna have to deal with one surgery, two surgeries, three surgeries. You don't know if you have chemotherapy. You don't know any of that stuff, so it's just, guess and speculation. So at that point we decided we needed to tell our immediate families as well. So we all jumped into the car and it was the weekend by then and so we drove down to Utah to my, my, my mother's house in Bountiful and we told her and I went through the whole story and of course everybody cried again and my kids had to hear the whole story again which was not fun. My brother came over and my uncle and they gave me a blessing and uh, told me that I would be okay and I've had several blessings along the way so don't be afraid to ask for blessings as well to help you in whatever circumstance. We then drove up to my sister's house and told her family and her, her uh, husband was a doctor and he gave us as much as he knew but you know it was the same you know, four or five doors that we would have to walk through that, that we kind of knew what was possible and what was coming a little bit. Then we went to my wife's um, uh, mom's house and her sisters and brothers came over and we told them as well. So it was hard and we told the story over and over and over again. I think you'll find that is, that is one of the things is that you'll start to, here I am, you'll start to be telling the story over and over again and it you get really good at telling the story but um, emotionally it it drains you every time because they start to cry and you start to cry again and you just kind of relive it over and over and I know now you know I know people that have, that have cancer and sometimes you just just talk to them about normal stuff don't ask about the full story again because it just it's taxing, it's emotional, and it, it wears you down, makes you tired. So anyway, we got done telling everybody. We set up our appointment at the Huntsman Center, and uh, my wife scheduled a few days off of work, and uh, the Huntsman Center is probably three hours away from where we live. So we called there, set up an appointment. Their next available appointment was several weeks away, so we just had to wait, and that is another hard part, is just waiting. You can't just do all this stuff up at once. It just happens over time. You gotta set up this appointment, and then you gotta set up that appointment, and then set up that appointment. And sometimes they're so busy that those appointments are spaced so far apart, you feel like, man, I you know, am I gonna am I gonna die just from waiting this long? But all of the nurses and stuff uh, assured me that the time that we're spent waiting is not gonna be that big of a difference in, this, in the grand scheme of things. So we set up the appointment, we da went down to the Huntsman Center and you walk in the Huntsman Center doors and of course there's people, it's a cancer center, and so there's people walking around with those little beanies on because they've lost all of their hair. And 
I think that's kind of when reality hit me was you've got cancer and you might be dealing with this and you might be having to wear a beanie around because you'll be, you know, in chemo where you lose all your hair. So anyway, we walked up to the Huntsman Center and was sitting into the appointment and I think I'll just stop right here. We're at five minutes. And uh, so watch, continue watching my videos. Please subscribe and <clears throat> my next video coming up will be number four. So uh, keep watching and I'll give you more information um, about my story on melanoma. Hey, I think I think I see somebody in there. Oh, hey, that's you. You're watching my video. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you want to share it, share it with your neighbor on Facebook. Or if you want to keep watching my videos, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm done with that. We'll see you later. I think I see you in there.